I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm So I just wanted to go over this problem of uh, developing a force polygon um, for concurrent forces to see what an answer is. Again, we're looking for the resultant force and being able to draw, um, draw it. In this question that was actually posed, we've actually got um, a polar bear carcass that's being attacked by arctic wolves and is being pulled in different directions. And the idea is understanding uh, which direction, if we had all of these forces acting on this one at the t time, which way would this actually move based on the strength of all of these. So a couple of things to understand about something like this, when they're actually talking about the forces themselves, you usually find that all forces, when they're actually doing calculations like this, they cross over and they align to the middle. So when we're starting to do our diagrams for this, you can assume that we're all coming back to or off that one point. Okay, which is this one here, which is what we're going to look at. So when we're starting to draw, we're going to actually start to draw from there. So I'm just going to put a dot in here, so I know that I've actually got a starting place to actually work from. Now, it's important that we actually set a scale. So for this one here, scale, I'm actually going to say that 1 Newton equals 1 millimetre one millimeter so it's going to be quite easy to understand and we're going to be able to measure uh, measure the length of the force so we're going to actually be able to determine a power that way and we're also going to be able to determine at what angle the force is going to be traveling at so first one here the line is straight down so if I come in here and at the moment I'm just going to like I'm a lot if you haven't seen here I'm actually aligning my page using the lines on the rule to make sure that I get it straight and I'm actually just going to draw a line all the way down so I can see where it's going a little bit off there is leniency in some of these drawings as well like they'll be um, approximately equal to so you're going to get as close to that as possible so we know what we're looking at now I'm going to, this is my first force here that I'm actually going to do, which is actually at 50 newtons. So this line has to be uh, 50 millimetres. So I'm just going to come back in. I'm going to harden that up now because that is my first force. I also know that it is going directly down. I'm going to put that in there so I've got an understanding. When it comes to my next force, and I'm going to actually work around this. I'm going to be working around this as a guide. I need to come back in and put in a horizontal because I'm going to constantly be working off the horizontal when I'm using my protractor. Come in here, um, aligning the lines so everything's accurate that way. And I can see here that this is at 225 degrees. Okay, so here is my 180, 90, 200, 210, 220, 225. Just mark that in. And again, draw a big line at the moment. So as long as I'm going through those two points, that's what actually matters. Here, I am now looking at 20. I've done that one, so I can tick that off. I'm now looking at 20 newtons, which is... 20 millimeters. So there it is there, 20 mil. I have my second force in there now and it's coming down in this direction. Again, my horizontal, so I can see where everything is. Like I said, I'm using the lines on the on the rule to actually get the horizontals in. If you want to be more accurate, you can actually use the protractor, which will give you the definite directions that you desire. Right. Lining it up, I can see here I'm coming at 90 degrees. That's my 90. Big line. There. And here, at 90 degrees, and I've got 20 newtons on that one. I'm ticking these off because what will actually happen is um, you can get confused. So you want to make sure that you are actually ticking these forces off 
and I'm doing it in a logical format as well. I'm actually going around this rather than trying to do it any other way. So I can now tick that one off. Horizontal in. Horizontal in. This one now is at 45 degrees. Getting that all nicely aligned. 40, 45. Bigger line, and then coming back here at the 30 newtons. Ten twenty thirty in that direction. And my final one here, it's actually on the zero. So again, aligning my lines to the edge of the paper. Big line first of all. I'm now coming here, it's at 25 newtons. So then I'm going to go 25. That's 10, 20, 25 there. Okay, so now I've got all of these forces working in line. I now know that I have a point here, which was the starting point, and this here is the end point or the resultant force. Okay, so that's the direction I've actually got. I'm going to put in here a horizontal so I can measure it down as well. All right, so here is my resultant and I'm traveling down this way. So the length of this, as you can see, is, oh, it's about 39. And the angle and the angle here is 10, 20, 30, about 36 degrees. So, in this case here, um, the resultant force um, equals 39 newtons, and I'm actually coming down this way, so I'm actually giving an impression of 36 degrees. Again, these questions here, they'll actually pop up in um, multi, uh, not multi, <laughs> multiple choice questions in the HSC papers or in your exam paper. And you'll find like, rather, again, rather than solving all of these little triangles to get your horizontals and your, um, so you get horizontals and your verticals, it's easier sometimes to actually draw it in this case here. Tools used, definitely a protractor to get the angles rule to get the actual lines and like I said I used a combination of pens and colour so I didn't get lost in my travels in solving the solution and coming to the resultant force. Thanks, talk to you later.